How to start developing on Hedera. Back to the basics. I am Dicky Mullers and I'm a developer advocate at Hedera Hashgraph. So for this tutorial, we'll be using the documentation and we will also use the following blog post that introduces you to Hedera development. To get started, let's take a look at the outline. First, let's start with an introduction to the Hedera portal. You will create a testnet account and you'll receive fake testnet hbar. Next, we'll set up our environment on our laptop. Then we will create a new account using an account to create transaction and we will transfer some hbar to our newly created account. So first we'll need to create an account on the Adera portal. To do so, we'll go to portal.hedera.com and I will show you how the first landing page looks like. So you can choose between creating a mainnet account and a testnet account. So for this tutorial, you'll need a testnet account. Uh, you'll have to fill out some basic information, submit the information and confirm your email. Once that is done, you'll get access to the Hedera portal. As you can see, you'll find a private key, a public key, and your account ID. To set up your account, you will need to copy the account ID and the private key for the next step. So let's head over to our code editor. You'll see we have created a blank project. I've called it M setup and we'll need to create some files first. So let's create our .m file. This file will be used to store our private key and the account ID. Then we'll also need an index.js file and let's initialize our repository and use the dash-yes option to accept the defaults. Cool. Now we'll need access to the JavaScript SDK and we will also need .env. So let's install these packages. Let's install .env and let's install the hash graph SDK, let's use this to save. There we go. Now the SDK has been installed. Let's open the index.js file and let's head over to our browser. So as you can see, I've switched my page to the environment setup now in the documentation and you'll find some code. So make sure to copy this code and paste it in your code editor. As you can see, we're loading the my account ID and my private key from the .m file. So therefore, let's move a little bit up again and let's copy over the following information and let's paste it in into our .m file. Now, make sure to replace this information with your actual information. So each account will always start with 0, .0 0.0 and then a serial number referencing to your account. So it can be something like this. And then make sure to copy your private key and paste in the correct private key you have. Okay, so next, let's take a look at the documentation, what's coming. Okay, so now we have to create an, a client object. The client object will be used to communicate with Hedera nodes and to send transactions or query for uh, certain balances or things that we want to know. And you will see that we also set the operator using an account. So this account will pay for all transactions and queries made through this client object. So for now, we'll just use our account as the account that will be paying for the fees. Let's get back to the code and add it in. Make sure to format the document. There is a handy shortcut in Visual Studio Code for this. And finally, let's verify the code. So if you have a look at tutorials, you'll see there is always like a code check section that shows you like the full code. So if you're unsure if you did the right thing, you can always go back and verify your code. So now let's go back to our editor and let's verify if the code works. Let's add a quick success message at the end. And let's also close the client object properly. So once that is done, we can run the code with node.index.js. There we go. And we immediately see a success message. And I even mistyped the word success. Cool. So let's get to the next step. Step three. Okay. 
So this corresponds to the create an account section here. And you will see that we have to import a couple of new objects from our Azure App SDK. So let's copy the above line. We already have the .env configuration. And let's paste it in at the top of our file. So you can see this is duplicate code. So we can remove this one and you will see we now import a private key object, account create transaction, which we will need an account balance query and age bar. We'll actually don't need the account balance query. So let's add it like this. So next we'll have to generate some new keys. We can do this using the private key method we have just imported. Make sure to add the code in the correct place after the set operator function. So here we are creating a new ed25519 uh, key object using the private key object. And we can access our new public key uh, on the private key object. So this is a new pair of keys. However, the pair of keys doesn't exist yet on the testnet. So to make the account exist, we need to send it a transaction. Uh, otherwise the ledger won't record it. So we can do this using the account create transaction, which you have just imported. And you will see, we have to await it. We set the key to the new account public key. So the account we want to create on the testnet. We can give it an initial balance. So we use the age bar um, object to convert from tiny bars to age bar. So we want to give a thousand tiny bars, which is a very little initial amount, but enough for this example. And then we execute the transaction using the client object we have defined earlier. Next, we will have to retrieve the account ID. So we can first query for the receipt. So once you send the transaction, you can always query for a receipt. And then the receipt will contain your new account ID. So let's call it new account ID, which equals the get received parameter. And we can just access account ID on top of it. And to finish it off, let's also log this information. So new account ID is a template literal. And uh, let's print it out. So let's do this. Note index.js. And there we go. We have created a new account. Let's format our code again so it looks a bit nicer. So now we can transfer some HBAR from our testnet account to the newly created account. To keep our code clean, let's create a new file called transfer.js. There we go. And make sure to copy your account ID because we will also need it in the next step. Uh, but first let's copy the entire code, go to transfer.js, remove the code we don't need. So we have already created our account. So all this information can go. There we go. Then we will need our new account ID because we want to transfer HBAR to this account. So let's define this as const new account ID equals our newly created account. And if you take a look at the documentation under the transfer HBAR guide, you will see for JavaScript, the full guide is also here. So in the first step, we will have to define a transfer transaction. First of all, we'll need to import it from the Hashgraph SDK. And then take a closer look at how we do transfers in Hedera. So you will see two at HBAR transfer methods being called. The first one, we want to transfer from my account ID, the value of minus thousand. And then we say the new account ID will receive thousand HBAR. So in conclusion, the sum of a transfer transaction should always be zero. So minus thousand plus thousand equals zero. So let's copy this code. You can also copy just this part, head over to your editor and paste it in. So as you can see, the transfer transaction object is yellow. That's because we haven't imported it yet. So let's import it here. And now the code is green. Cool. Next. 
we are sending the transaction. So we want to retrieve the receipt for this transaction. Let's call transaction error x and await the send hbar function dot get receipt. And we have to pass in our client object again. Then we can lock the transaction status actually. So we can do console.lock and we can say status of txn is transaction or x dot status. And lastly, we can also verify the new account balance. So we have to add account balance query inside, we import it and we create a new parameter get new balance equals await new account balance query. And this function accepts two, or actually only one input, which is the account ID for which we want to know the balance. So here we want to know it for our new account ID. And then execute the transaction again. There we go. And lastly, of course, we have to lock the output on the lock. And then we use a get new balance object dot h bars and let's convert it to tiny bars to make it a bit more readable. So that's it. So to verify the code, let's execute it. Transfer.js. So success and the new balance is thousand. So our initial balance for this account was 1000 tiny bars. And now we have transferred an additional 1000 tiny bars to this account. Uh, actually, we can also look up the account on the testnet explorer. So if you go back to our browser and you can go to hashcan.io, make sure to select the testnet view. And then under accounts, we can paste in our new account ID and look it up. As you can see, the balance actually still showed zero. This is because the way explorers work, they will get their data from a mirror node, which only gets updated every several minutes from a Hedera node. So don't worry if you don't see a balance immediately being popped up on the explorer. This is because it takes a couple of minutes to update explorers. If you want to learn more about Hedera development, I encourage you to go to the try examples section where you can find examples on how to create tokens, create NFTs, how to transfer them. You can learn more about the Hedera uh, consensus service, which includes topics, the Hedera smart contract service, and this is actually the Hedera token service. And further, make sure to dive into the core concepts on how accounts work, how scheduled transactions work. And if you want to look up some specific uh, functions about your SDK, for example, um, we just used the keys, we generated a new key pair. You can look up every method in the documentation. So generate E5, and you will always find like examples inside of the documentation. That's it for today. Uh, thank you for listening and hope you'll get a good first start on Hedera development.